<sighs> it is so cold. It is freaking freezing here in northern <laughs> Michigan. Now, in our nearly 10 years on the road, we've experienced everything from triple-digit heat in the summertime to our record low of 6 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was inside the camper. It was cold. Today, it's 17 degrees in northern Michigan, and it's the perfect day to test out our new camper insulation system made by Air Skirts. Hi, I'm Sherry. And I'm Hutch. And together with our 1957 vintage canned ham style camper that we lovingly call Hamlet, we are freedom in a can. Now we love to go south in the winter and north in the summer, but that's not always in the cards for us because we have family in very wintry places. So made in 1957, the walls of Hamlet are rather sparsely insulated with something called silver coat, which honestly is not much more than just a thin sheet of paper. Now during our renovation, we did add some insulation to the roof, but we still lose a lot of heat to the walls and especially the floor. When we first saw air skirts, we were like, now that is a great idea, but we want to see how well it works for ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to test our insulation and heating system, such as it is, without the air skirts installed. Then we'll put them in place and we'll redo the test to measure the difference. We did two pairs of tests this past winter, one in early February and another in early March. We were trying to find two consecutive days where the weather forecast was quite similar. For our two baseline tests with no air skirts in place, we simply measured the outside temperature and the inside temperature, turned on our heater, fired up the kettle for some tea, and measured how long it would take to get the inside air temperature to a cozy 70 degrees Fahrenheit. During each test, it took around one and a half hours to heat the camper from a starting temperature in the low to mid 20s. When it reached 70 degrees Fahrenheit, we turned off the heater and waited for the inside temperature to cool down to below 40. This took between three and three and a half hours each time. We are about ready to install our air skirt, so we thought we'd open up the bag and open up the box and show you what comes with your welcome kit. There are corner protectors for any of those sharp edges. There's another type of sharp edge protector for the linear parts of the underside. And then also a patch kit in the unlikely event that a hole gets into one of the air skirts. And of course your owner's manual that will walk you through the process. This handy dandy duffel bag that comes with uh, the kit so that you can put your air skirts in there when they're not in use. And an 800 watt compressor that you can use to blow up the skirts. Now for Hamlet, we have two four foot skirts and two six foot skirts. And those are gonna be combined to go around the bottom of the perimeter of Hamlet. Let's get started. So the clearance on our trailer is super low, which means our bags are gonna be squished and wide and our pressure is relatively low. So the pump is an 800 watt pump, which means we can't run it with our 700 watt inverter. They gave us this little adapter, screws in, and it can attach to a bike pump or anything that could pump up a tire. So an air compressor, maybe one of those tire inflators that run off of the car battery. So we're gonna try both of those things, pumping it up and the car battery. It's a good way to get a workout, warm you up while you're, while you're uh, inflating these. that was a lot quicker. If you've got one of these and you don't have access to 110 or 120 voltage, this is a viable option for filling up all of your tubes. 
This was the first time we installed our air skirts and it took way longer than expected. Between readjusting, protecting some pokey bits, inflating, deflating, trying different ways to inflate and filming, it took us about an hour and a half. With none of those parameters, I can imagine we're gonna get that installation down to about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. If you have shore power, you're gonna be able to run that pump and it's gonna be able to inflate, deflate, quicker than you can snap your fingers. And we also learned that the bike pump is a viable option. Hey, it warms you up as you're doing it. And that tire inflator running off your car battery is also a really good solution. So let's take a look at our results. For the February test, we had two consecutive days that were nearly identical. Both typical Michigan winter days. A lot of cloud, very little wind, with temperatures between the high teens and the low 20s. There was only a four and a half degree differential between day two and day one. Without the air skirts in place, it took one and a half hours for the camper to heat up to 70 degrees. With the air skirts installed, it took only one and a quarter hours to come up to that same temperature. So just a 15 minute difference there. But we noticed a big difference when we turned the heater off and allowed the camper to cool back down to 40 degrees. Without the air skirts in place, it took two and one half hours to drop 30 degrees compared to three and three quarter hours to drop the same amount with the air skirts installed. So our vintage camper with very little insulation managed to hold on to its heat for an hour and a quarter longer with the air skirts in place. So we did the test again in March and we had two consecutive days that were forecasted to be quite similar, but they actually turned out to be very different weather days. The first was cold, sunny all day with no wind to speak of. The second was very cold and cloudy with significant wind. The temperature differential between day one and day two turned out to be 23 degrees with wind chill factored into the equation. At first we were disappointed because we hoped we have two consecutive days so we could do a good side-by-side -side comparison. But let us show you what we found out when we ran the numbers. The heating up process was about the same, about one and a half hours to heat up to 70 degrees inside the camper. With the air skirts in place, our heater was able to make up the five degree handicap in the same amount of time. It took nine full hours for the temperature inside the camper to drop 45 degrees, even with frigid wind blowing outside. So the test we did in February showed a much slower temperature decline with the air skirts in place on day two than on day one without them in place. The test we did in March showed an equal temperature decline between day one with no air skirts and day two with the air skirts in place. But keep in mind on that second day, we had a wind chill factor that was 23 degrees colder than on day one. And we feel like that's a huge win for air skirts. Since we did the two tests, we have been living inside the camper. And what we've noticed is that on an average winter day, kind of hovering in the 30s to 40s, we just simply don't need to run the heater as much with those air skirts in place. But the air skirts can insulate your RV, keeping it cooler in the summertime. This can save you a lot of money on your utility bills, especially if you have to run an air conditioner throughout the summer months. Of course, you can order air skirts at any time of the year, but during May, June, and July, you can take advantage of some extra savings with their pre-order sale with delivery in October. So be sure to use our affiliate link in the video description below, as well as promo code CANLIFE to take advantage of those extra savings. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the road.